Coming, uh, remember, remember to pick up the handouts, uh, especially there's a couple of sheets on uh, media availabilities for the rest of this week. And also a reminder, no live streaming. Thanks, Paul. Uh, let's we open up. We're excited for the opportunity to play uh, in the SEC championship game. I think it's uh, a credit to the seniors on this team to be able to go to this game, you know, two years back to back, which um, sometimes can be diff difficult to do. Um, and it's an honor to be in it playing. You know, one of the hottest teams in the country, one of the best teams in the country, and we know a lot about them. They know a lot about us. Uh, we got a short week last year to prepare for them, so it was kind of a short window, especially <laughs> compared to what we had to prepare for the uh, the first game, the Oklahoma game. Um, but they've got a great team. I don't think anybody would argue that. They've got very few deficiencies in any area. Uh, talented quarterback, explosive offense, and first thing you notice when they turn, turn the tape on <coughs> how fast and how much they score. Um, they play some good teams in our conference and they still score a lot of points. Defensively, they've gotten better throughout the year. Got a really good football team. And, uh, we'll be focused on our team this week and we'll be working really hard to be at our best and uh, our best will be needed. We'll have to play well on special teams, defense and offense, and uh, that'll be our goal. Raise your hand if you have a question. Kirby, when you got here as a player, Florida had its fun and gun going with Anthony and Hilliard and those guys, and those guys could get such separation. When you look at that and what Alabama's doing this year with their yards per catch, is it kind of reminiscent, or do they do are they doing things different as far as that goes? Uh, you know, I think it's hard to say. I, I, you know, those those teams in Florida were a long time ago, and they had they had really good wideouts, elite wideouts, and they had good quarterbacks, but their quarterbacks were mostly stable sitting in the pocket guys. And if you remember, they, you know, they got, came after by a Florida State team that was really aggressive and came after them. But um, you know, the young man we're playing now can run, can throw, uh, can make the throws, can make the checks. They have, they, they've got really good backs. You, know, you don't think about backs that played at Florida back then. These guys have the complete package. When you look across the board on the offensive unit, there's not like a glaring weakness there. Um, people say they can't run the ball. They can run the ball. They got physical alignment. They've got they've got the ability to. They just choose to score faster other ways. Hey Kirby, as it relates to defending kickoffs, um, what do y'all look at this week? Not just because of the touchdown against Tech, or the Tech support, but they are giving up something like 30 yards of return. Uh, yeah, we got to do a better job. I mean, at the end of the day, we've we've got a coverage unit that. It's our responsibility as coaches is probably falling asleep because of a guy that kicks at a high rate of, <coughs> of uh, touchbacks. I mean, Rod's in the 80s or something, and, and touchbacks, was, at least he was for a while. And, you know, we try to even cover some against UMass uh, intentionally to get some coverages. And, you know, we just hadn't done a good job of our coverage. And our hang times by Rod have been tremendous. He's done a great job of uh, placement of the ball. He's going to do a better job covering it. And if we kick it out, we kick it out. You know, that's, that's the key. Coach, how much of it, if any, does it help Jake that he played against Alabama last year? Maybe have a, I don't know, maybe a better idea of kind of what to expect. I don't think it hurts anything, um, but this year's a different year. I mean, I think the the fact that he's played what, 11 games, 12 games, I don't even know how many games he played, that, that that has more to do with than who we played. The fact that he's played and got experience and you know, he's gone against our defense uh, all spring, he's gone against our defense all fall, and then he goes in all these games and plays. And that that's more valuable than just playing in Alabama. But the fact that he played against them last year, sometimes that helps. You know, sometimes it, it also helps. He had literally two first round backs that are, um, were out there with him as well. And, and I know one was taken in the second, but he's a first round talent. So when you sit there and look at it, you go, he had a lot of help. He'll have a lot of help this year. We'll have to play well offensively. Kirby, when last year, when you were in your second year as a head coach, you were asked multiple times about the difference between year one and year two. Is there any difference being your second year, kind of going into the postseason, playing in this game, and, and kind of preparing for maybe a college football playoff run and what you guys have coming up? Is there anything you've learned about what you guys went through last year in preparing for this game that you can kind of carry over? I'm not sure I understand the question. You're talking about preparing for the SEC championship game or something we learned last year from the national title game? What, what you learned from yeah from your, from the experience <clears throat> postseason play last year that you kind of take into 
scheduling this week and, and preparing for this week? Uh, not really. I mean, the, the, that, that, that postseason schedule is so different because there was a long layoff. There was a get all your team better, prepare your team. You're really preparing for three teams, the one you play and the two that you might play. I mean, it's, it's a playoff scenario. So that preparation is very different than this. This would be more similar to just finished a game. We've got to go play an SEC championship, which is more similar to when we played Auburn last year as far as the schedule goes. Team's completely different. Um, but we'll we'll do it like a normal game week. We can't <laughs> can't say this game is oh well we got to do something different this game. Oh, we got to go out and be who we are. We got to go play better, and we got to continue to improve. We got a bunch of young guys that got to go uh, compete and play in a, in a big stage environment. Kirby, you uh, obviously coached in the for, for so long, uh, a couple places. Um, when you're on the sideline in situations like that. Do you would you have gained any particular insight uh, in, into maybe what Nick is thinking during the game that could help you during the game? You know, I don't know. I mean, I think that, that there's going to be similar thinking. So, I mean, if, if you argue that there is a benefit from knowing what he's thinking or what he's thinking about in a certain situation, then he could say the same because it certainly uh, was with him long enough to, to know that in certain situations I have a lot of the same beliefs and thoughts. So I don't think anybody strategically gains something because you work together for 10 years or you work together for 12 years at different places that, I mean, football is football. You have to make a decision. You know, what is your strategy on third and one? What is your strategy on fourth and four? And I don't think anybody is so predictable that you know that 100%. So I don't think you gain a whole lot from it. And, and sorry, one follow-up. I know the subject was beaten to death last January, but indulge me with one question. Do you think beating your mentor would be special at all, as opposed to any other one? I, I really don't look at it that way at all. It's not personal for me. I don't look at it as, as that at all. I mean, it, it would be gratifying to our players. It would be the next step towards going to the playoffs. And those are the objectives that we want. It's not, it's not about me, it's not about him, it's not about the fact that we work together. It's never about that to me because I don't see it that way. I see a really good football team on the other side that our guys have earned the right to go play against. And that's that's really all it is for me. Kirby, you mentioned during the offseason about lessons learned in coverage from that last play of the game last year. Has that come up during the last year um, that you've taught your guys far mm -hmm. enough? Not really. I mean, they, they, that lesson was learned the day we installed that defense. I mean, when you play cover two and you play halves, you got a guy over the top of another guy, you got a guy in the flat, and the guy in the flat should jam and reroute, and the guy in the half should be in the half. And there's nothing about that game that you learn because that game came down to more than just that. I mean, that's just what people remember the most. So when we teach that coverage, we teach it the same way we taught it the year before. We just hope that uh, we do a better job of executing it. Um, Coach, a two-part question on Tua. Uh, um, as you guys kind of study him and see what he does, is there any carryover from last year and having played him in a meaningful type of action for 30 minutes? And, and then also, uh, have you noticed any differences in the way that he's, he's played um, in that half last year, too? There he is now. Oh, yeah, he's, he's improved tremendously. I mean, he was really good in that half, but you got to remember they had – two really young linemen in the game. They got a lot of receivers that were playing at that point that were really young, that have grown up. I mean, their, their, their receiving core is extremely talented and they all seem young men. So now they're all very experienced, uh, very talented, and he's got them at his disposal to make good decisions and put the ball in the right people's hands. And he does a tremendous job of his decision-making and touch and accuracy is really just off the charge. And uh, I mean, it was in our game last year too, but now it's a more experienced version of it. Uh, and I don't know that playing against him last year helps any this year. I don't think that's, you know, I think it doesn't have anything to do with it. I think it has to do with both teams this year because our team is certainly extremely different, especially defensively. Coach, uh, you, you talked a lot after last season uh, <coughs> about it's not easy replacing number one and number 27. Uh, but if you look at your rushing production, it's been almost identical to last year. And a two-part question here as well. Elijah Holyfield in particular, his ability to get to the pylon uh, appears to be fairly special. Uh, and, and just what, what you've seen from him this season that, that maybe exceeded your expectations. 
Uh, I've been very pleased with Elijah. Number one, his leadership more so than his ability to get to the pylon has been tremendous. His work ethic day in and day out, his, his toughness and his attitude um, is tremendous. Uh, I think both those backs would tell you they benefit from a physical offensive line and a group of receivers that are a threat to catch the ball. So, you know, those things help open boxes. And when people don't want to play you one-on-one, -on -one, which Alabama will, they open up things for the uh, other guys. And that's important. But Elijah's been tremendous, and um, he's got a good knack for getting the ball in the end zone. And, uh, he's a slasher. He, he's not afraid of contact. Coach, you uh, updated uh, on your teleconference Monty Rice and Cade Mays. Uh, any updates with that? And also, uh, Ben Cleveland and Trey kind of hobbled off late against Tech. What does he look like for this week? Uh, Trey's good to go. I mean, he was, he was out about yesterday, moving around. So, expect Trey to be fine. Um, really, all those guys, uh, Ben's in the same boat he's been in. I mean, you guys ask about Ben every week. Ben's fighting to get back. We think, you know, Ben's not 100%. But he's closer to 100% than he was yesterday. So we keep trying to get him back and doing all we can to get him back. And then uh, really nothing changed on Caden and the money from last night. I don't know anything else. That's been less than 24 hours ago. Kirby, obviously their receiver death is, is what it is. Do you think your all's receivers are kind of unheralded also? One through whatever it is, five, six, is, I mean, could they? stack up with Alabama's receivers? I think it's a tough comparison. I don't like doing comparisons. I, I got a lot of respect for Alabama's wideouts. I think they're uh, tremendous. I think they're the, probably the best unit we face. And they're talented, man. They get vertical. They run routes. They stick their feet in the ground. And they've got a good guy throwing it to them. Um, but so do we. We've got a good wide receiver core. We've got a deep wide receiver core across the board. A lot of guys have stepped up. And uh, Jake allows those guys to make plays. So comparing them, I think it's hard to say because I'm certainly proud of the way our guys play on special teams and play physical, uh, but their guys are very, very talented too. Jake and the receiver core seem to be really on point, especially uh, the way they played against Tech. Uh, what do you like that you've seen as far as their growth this season? Uh, timing, um, you know, balance. Uh, done a good job of the RPO game, done a good job of the vertical passing game. Um, they've done a good job connecting on whether it's uh, press man routes, off man routes. They're getting better. They throw and catch a lot together. I think you know Jake has a, a trust with that group, and uh, they trust him that the ball is going to be there on time. And let's give them some credit. They run good routes and get open and catch the ball. But none of this happens without the protection, and uh, that's one of the keys to this game is Number one, keeping the quarterback upright because of the number of sacks and this disruption they have. Um, but our guys protecting the quarterback well and being able to have balance because you don't want to live in third and long against this team. Kirby, will y'all be inside pretty much the whole week? Is there any point in going outside this week? We may be outside just to get out there, but it's going to depend on the weather. I mean, it's not like it is every other week where you'd say, I want to go outside because we're playing outside. We'll, we'll, we'll do it based on the weather and whether or not we want to get off the turf for a day. But. Uh, most of the times we play in a game like this, we're inside. When you were at Alabama, did you see teams that would come in and just, you could tell that they saw the Alabama name and weren't ready to play? And how does it help your team knowing that they could have beaten Alabama last year as they come in as 10-point underdogs? Yeah, I don't know that it helps at all. I think the, the biggest thing is preparing your team the right way to play and not get overwhelmed by the moment, if anything. I've, I've probably seen more teams lose it in the warm-ups, just trying to get all amped up and all that. I mean, you got to go play your best game. you got to be yourself. you got to be the best version of you, and you can't worry about the rest. A lot of those teams that I witnessed that, they didn't have near as good players as us either. So I think when you look at it and you say, okay, what is the talent level? What is the talent gap? They've got an extremely talented team. We respect that. But we also got a good football team. And our kids got a lot of pride in performance. And they're not basing that on last year's because there's a lot of those kids off that team. I and mean, there's, there's very few, I know defensively for us, there's very few guys that are back returning stars. We got a few on offense. But teams are different. Their team's different too. So that, this is two different teams. And the uh, good thing is we both get to go on the field and play. 
Kirby, you haven't even been here three full seasons yet. Given the turnover that Alabama's had on its coaching staff the last couple of years and just given all your responsibilities, are you close with anybody uh, over there as much as, say, you were, obviously, when you were there? Oh, yeah. I've still got a lot of good friends and their support staff and uh, the rest of their staff. There's still guys that I see in the offseason and things like that. Probably not as many um, with the changes they've had. But, I mean, that, that'll always be the case. I think every time you play, there's somebody on the coaching staff that I've worked with or at least I'm good friends with, and that's no different in Alabama. Obviously, you you know knew they were all coming, all these questions about Alabama and your time there and all that. I'm sure you're probably proud of what you guys were able to accomplish, but does, does it all – is there is there a, a fatigue factor or even kind of a weary factor being asked all these questions and having to kind of deal with that link with you guys playing last year, playing this year? Is is there any frustration that goes into not really. no, field I mean, all those? I, I'm, I'm more uh, worried about how to stop these wideouts and how to stop the quarterback. I'm not fatigued by this. I'm I'm, I'm a lot more concerned with how we're going to play and where we're going to play guys and how we're going to go about doing things. That that's that's you guys. That's your questions. I get it. Y'all got a job to do, my job to answer. Hey, Kirby, you mentioned the protection of the quarterbacks as being a, a crucial part of this game. Just in stopping those wideouts, how just how critical would it be just making Joe uncomfortable with the pass rush as far as helping your DBs out and not letting them break up and deep? It'd be great to do that. It'd be awesome to do that. Uh, I think if you can disrupt the pocket and get him out of to do that, you got to take a lot of chances. And uh, there's some good players back there behind those chances you're taking. And uh, they also have the ability to expose you when you're not bounced up on the run. I mean, there's there's similarities between their offense and our offense. Uh, they do a really good job offensively of running the ball and putting together run packages. They just don't have to use them all the time because they're really explosive. So getting pressure affecting the quarterback, absolutely that's critical. But not giving up big plays is too. Kirby, I know you talked about the, the teams are much different uh, even since last year, but how much can, can you motivate guys? I mean, I know you like to show things that have happened in the past. How much does what happened in January, you think, push your team a little bit or provide a little extra edge or make them go a little bit harder this week? I really think it's, it, it's to each each his own. I mean, that's not a motivating factor for me. I mean, that's not, not driving me. What's driving me is the young men in this room that will be in here in a couple of hours trying to do my best job for them. And that's what our coaching staff has to do. We've got to put our guys in the best situation to be successful. And that's all we're concerned with. Because when you let all the outside forces and the outside motivation control you, sometimes you get emotional and you don't make the best decisions. We got to put the best plan together we can to play our best game against Alabama, not the Alabama last year, you know, not the Georgia last year. So <coughs> that, that's that's motivation for a lot of people, and that's the the media talk. But for us, it's what do I have to do to play my best game? That's what I want to work on. Two more questions. Uh, Coach, you have a very young secondary, but you do lead the nation right now in fewest plays of 20 or more yards. How have you been able to do that, and how can you, you know, use that against Alabama? Well, I, you know, I think that's sometimes going to be a misleading stat, but um, this year our kids have done a good job keeping people cut off and not giving up explosive plays. And you do that by leveraging the ball, and you do that by not busting coverages. Uh, you do that by not getting beat man to man. And those are things that we have to do every game. It's not like we have to do it this game. We have to do it every game. Uh, but along with that, we got to do a good job affecting the quarterback. And sometimes that exposes you to more risk, and you got to go play better. Is Irv Smith a particularly difficult matchup there, tight end, or have you seen that with his this season? Yeah, he's talented. And he's extremely fast. Like he's one of, like I said, that when you look across the personnel board, they've got a plethora of guys that are talented skill players. I mean, I think their backs are, are underrated. They've got unbelievable backs. If you catch the ball in the backfield, they can do all kinds of things. But Irv Smith's a matchup problem. He's a talented and a really talented guy and good player and good blocker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.